Today I'll be inspecting this 1926 Chelsea Ships Bell Clock. The owner sent it out to a Chelsea expert for cleaning and oiling. The clock was in the shop for two years. The clock has never kept time since the day it returned from the clock shop. It now runs slow and it's unable to be regulated to keep time. This inspection plate on the back has a slightly different color to it. The case serial number. Someone scratched their mark on the back here. For its age, the plating is in good shape on the back. The case is nickel plated. More scratched in numbers. Hinge knuckles have some brass showing. Some small corrosion spots where the plating is just bonding from the brass base metal. Some of these scratches look to have been plated over. It has a brushed finish. Originally, it would have been highly polished. Bezel release button. A tool mark here, possibly left from a screwdriver or something similar. A few small dents here and there. Looks like salt water corrosion on these brass hinge screws. The brass retaining ring for the glass isn't corroded like the hinge screws. It has poor fit up on the ends, almost as if it has the incorrect arc bent on it. Mylar dial protector. Minute hand. Dial trim ring. Inside of case has black spray paint on it. The minute hand is blued and has some active rust pits on it. Multiple tool marks on the hour hand. Looks like a steel tool has been used on it to pry the minute hand loose at one time. Hour hand has been blued and has some bare steel areas on it. Dial is missing some of the silvering here on the bottom. This dark blackish color is the oxidized brass under the silver. The owner says, after two years in the repair shop, his clock came back running slow. The clock is unable to be regulated faster to keep time. The regulator is slid completely over to the fast position. The regulator should always be set near the center with the clock keeping time before it leaves any shop. The clock was just cleaned and oiled, so it should be in tip-top condition. Just need to inspect and see what can be done to regulate it slightly faster. Overall, the silvering on the dial is in a distressed condition. Lots of oxidized brass showing. This lettering here is a little uneven, almost like it was stamped one letter at a time. Here it reads, Negus, New York, which stands for the company of Thomas S. Negus, a manufacturer of fine nautical instruments in the United States. His business opened in 1848. Here's several of his early trading cards that advertise navigation instruments and a few other vintage paper items with his business name on them. Dial is held on by three steel taper pins. Some mainspring graphite grease here by the winding arbors. Yellow color on this pinion is excess oil. The pinion is full of oil. Excess oil on the plate here has collected some lint. And excess oil in this pinion. It's transferring to the gear teeth. Excess oil on this gear hub. Oil serves no purpose here except to seep around and collect dust. Excess oil here is between the pinion and the plate. Far too much oil on this movement. The escape wheel pinion is full of oil as well. The pillar posts are coated with excess oil. The outside of the mainspring barrels are saturated with oil. 
and dust particles are starting to stick to it. Someone's fingerprint in the oil here. Colored oil smudges. These darkish areas next to the bright yellow areas is where the gold gilt has been damaged and is brass that has been oxidized. Close to 90% of the gold plating is missing on these plates. The balance wheel has poor amplitude. Only about 150 degrees. Should be twice that. Escape wheel pinion is slightly loose fitting. This wouldn't cause it not to be regulated faster. Large amount of excess oil on this pivot. There's oil on the hairspring. The oil is sticking the hairspring together on the outer coils. Probably the source for the poor balance amplitude and it running slow. In slow motion, you can see just how poor the amplitude is. Should be swinging twice as far as it is. Cleaning the balance spring will probably correct the slow timing, but the excess oil could eventually work its way onto the spring and balance wheel again. The regulator pins have been bent sideways to adjust them. These regulator pins have adjusting screws. Not sure why someone would bend them. Here you can see excess oil between the pallet fork and the cock. Excess oil between these two front plates. Oil is pooled in here. This paper acts like a sponge. Just look at all this oil. The serial number on the movement matches the case serial number. The numbers are missing the black enamel paint. Several patents from 1898, 1899, and 1900. More damaged gold gilt and oxidized brass on the back plate. Gold gilt is intact on all these peripheral parts. Excess oil that has attracted dust particles. Excess oil has migrated into these indented letters. Some of them are filled with oil. When a clock pivot is over oiled, given time, the oil migrates away from the pivot and spreading all over the entire movement. Some type of dark hardened foreign material here. It's stuck on here. More chunks of it here. It's soldering flux that spattered and wasn't cleaned off. The rocker annex spring broke. Someone soldered it while it was attached to the clock movement. Sign of a butcher here. Now for a closer inspection of the escapement. Hairspring stud screw. Push the hairspring stud free. Balance cock screw. Balance cock. This balance cock is a replacement. Serial number doesn't match. And this balance wheel is a replacement as well. Serial number doesn't match. The yellow area between the hairspring coils is excess oil. There's recent tool marks on the collet. Looks like someone may have put a screwdriver in here and twisted it, spreading the collet and causing it to crack. The hairspring collet has a crack about 60% through it. It's intact on the balance staff, but it's ready to break in half if disturbed. Balance and hairspring are all cleaned. No signs of oil anymore. The regulator pins are bent sideways. They're functioning, but someone bent them rather than use the adjusting screws for some reason. The regulator pins seem to be adjusted fine. The pallet fork jewels have good lock, drop, and draw with the escape wheel teeth, but the fork is sluggish feeling. The snap action isn't lively enough to give a quick kick to the balance wheel. The excess oil here between the pallet fork and pallet cock is slowing down its action. 
I'll use some watch paper pieces to remove the excess oil. Now that looks and sounds better. A little bit more of excess oil removal from the plate and ready for a test with the balance assembly. Looking good so far. Now that has a nice, lively motion to it. Great, it went from about 160 degrees of amplitude to close to 360 degrees amplitude. Well, the poor amplitude and running slow issue was resolved on this movement. All it took was to remove some of the excess oil from the escapement. Now to contact the owner and see how they want to proceed on the other issues. A nice 1926 Chelsea Ships Bell Clock. <laughs> 